Welcome to Economics 1723 Capital Markets. Uh, this is a short module which is an appendix to Lecture 4, giving you some, some proofs of properties of arithmetic and geometric averages. And we're going to be applying this to returns. So to start with the arithmetic average return, this is the most obvious measure of average return, simply the sample mean of uh, period by period returns. Uh, so think about the situation where we have historical observations for capital T periods from 1 through capital T. Then what we're going to do to calculate the arithmetic average return is uh, the following. Let's start with gross returns 1 plus r little t. That's for each period, the gross return for each period. We're going to add them up over the capital T periods that we have, and then we're going to divide by the number of periods. That will give us a gross arithmetic average return 1 plus a. Or we might more normally think about this by subtracting 1 from both the left hand side and the right hand side, then we see that a is the average, the sample average of the r's, the net returns. All right, so what's the geometric average return? Well, what that is, is the cumulative return over the whole sample period from period 1 to period capital T then annualized by taking the teeth root or by raising to the power 1 over t. All right, so the geometric average return is defined like this. 1 plus g, again doing it in gross terms, is the product of all the gross returns period by period, the product of capital T of those things, and then we annualize by raising to the power 1 over t. All right, so... Uh, What's the proof that A is always greater than G? Well, the, uh, arithmet the gross arithmetic average return is this uh, 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 average like this, and the gross geometric is this uh, product like this. So notice that we're summing up here, and we're multiplying here for the geometric average. Uh, so to understand the difference, let's take logs. Let's use lowercase letters to denote the logs of the corresponding uppercase letters. Then little a is going to be the log of 1 plus big A. So little a is the log of the gross arithmetic return. So that's the log of this average here. All right, so little a is the log of the average. Now similarly, let's calculate little g, which is the log of 1 plus big G. That's the log of this product. Now remembering that the log converts a, a power to a multiple and a product to a sum, um, we take the log of this thing and we're going to get um, the average of the logs of individual uh, gross returns. So we can think about little g as the average of logs. So in comparing uh, little a and little g, we're comparing the log of the average, that's little a, to the average of the log which is little g. Now, the log function is concave. It looks like a utility function. Remember the concave utility function we were looking at in class. So we can use Jensen's inequality, which tells us that for any concave function, the concave function of the average is bigger than the average of the concave function. That's just a way of saying that the concave function is always above a straight line connecting any two points. So the log of the average is bigger than the average of the log. All right, it's, it's uh, also equivalent to saying that if you have log utility, you'd rather have the average wealth because the log of that, the, the log utility of that average wealth is going to exceed the average log utility of uh, different random outcomes. So it's very much related to the statement that the log um, function is a risk averse concave function. So we know, using Jensen's inequality for concave functions, that the log of the average exceeds the average of the log. That tells us that little a is bigger than little g, and hence big A must be bigger than big G, and that completes the proof. Now, a final thing that I want to discuss, a property that I want to discuss, and give you a sketch proof, is that when log returns are normal, uh, g is equal to the median return. All right, so what's the argument for that? First of all, remember that the normal distribution is symmetric. 
and for a symmetric distribution the mean is the same as the median. So if log gross returns are normal then g, little g which is the mean of the log return is also the median of the log return. Now if we go from little g to big G remember that 1 plus big G is the expo exponential of 1 plus little g then it must be that 1 plus g is the median of 1 plus r. That's because exponentiating doesn't change the ranking of things. So we still have the same order after exponentiating, so the middle observation will still be the middle observation. So g then is the median of r, and that completes the proof. So this is based on the assumption that log gross returns are normal. That's the key to this argument. Okay, so hopefully that makes those two properties clearer. The argument for why the arithmetic average must always exceed the geometric average, and the argument for why when log returns are normal, g equals the median return. Thank you.